Hey, Vlad here from DevInsidey.com. Welcome to another video in the book review series. Today we're reviewing Akka Concurrency by Derek White, a book that I read almost 10 years ago. Let's get right to it. Oh boy, where do I start? I've been a mostly Scala-related content creator since 2017, however, none of my content is related to the light band stack. Is it because it's bad? Well, not so fast. Story time. The year was 2012 and I was studying for my master's degree in computer science. Actors in Akka were all the rage at the time and so I wanted to write my master's thesis about them. A friend of mine was one semester ahead of me and she always wanted to live in Munich and so she moved eventually and then invited me as well. I didn't mind. All I needed was a company that was doing something with Scala. I would write my master's thesis about Akka for them and then also get hired by them. Long story short, mission accomplished. I wrote a poor man's version of Hadoop while I was there, and in fact, it's still in production. I've rewritten that a couple of years later, and my intel suggests that it currently runs on 10 nodes. In any case, while I was writing my thesis about Akka and Actors around 2013, I got my hands on the book that we're reviewing today. Akka Concurrency by Derek White, the preprint edition that I had, came out at the end of 2012. I've read quite a few papers and books for my thesis, however, this book was the most memorable one because it aligned with my topic quite a bit. It was Actors, Akka, Scala, what more can you ask for? The book is fairly large, around 500 pages with 21 chapters, and it covers pretty much the entire Akka toolkit in impressive detail. Obviously, when I say the entire Akka toolbox, I mean the entire for 2012. At the time, the Akka cluster was in its inception, there was no Akka persistence, no Akka streams, and all the actors were untyped. It starts off with a couple of motivational chapters. It talks about concurrency, parallelism, and asynchrony. It also introduces actors and futures. Fun fact from the past, Twitter and a couple of other companies had futures first, then Akka had them, and then they got moved into the Scala standard library. Another fun fact, the Scala standard library used to have a tiny implementation of actors as well. Back to the content. The next few chapters dive into actors and how to test them. The book continues with the assembly of armies of actors into actor systems and also addresses the problem of finding them within those systems. Then it gets into the life cycle of actors with the supervisors and other error handling strategies. After that, there is a bit of information about the common actor patterns, especially when it comes to routing messages. There is also a chapter about some internals like mailboxes and dispatchers. All of that is followed by a chapter which explains how to combine actors with futures, which concludes the first portion of the book that talks about actors on a single machine. The next 30 pages or so talk about networking with actors and I'm done parroting the table of contents. The rest of the book covers the topics that are either deprecated or changed substantially. In fact, I haven't been involved with actors or Akka or in fact the rest of the Lightband ecosystem since around 2015 and I'll say a couple of words about this a bit later in the video. Even though the book is very technical, it feels very light. In fact, I'm gonna go with the word joyful. The pictures are colorful and the narrative is very easygoing. It doesn't feel dry and uh, even though it's around 500 pages long, I don't remember falling asleep or anything like that. I don't know how else to say it, but somehow it was just a cool book to read. Now, me personally, I'd love to give it a really good rating. However, there is a catch. Several catches, in fact. First of all, as I already mentioned, at the time I read it, I already knew a lot about actors and Akka as well, actually. So for me, it was easy to understand, but I'm not so sure if it's well-rounded enough for newcomers. In fact, I wish the book had a bit more theory in there. There are only very few books about actors and Akka out there, and I'm afraid that most people don't actually know what makes actors so fascinating. Secondly, any book about concurrency, whether it's actors, fibers, functional, dysfunctional, JVM or not, any book about concurrency is very hard to write. I feel like the author did a decent job. However, if you take a look at the Amazon reviews, a lot of people disagree, which brings me to the next point. As already mentioned, the book is very joyful. You can feel that the author really loved the technology and was very excited to write this book. There's a lot of humor in there and a lot of people found it to be misplaced. It's a two-edged sword. Me personally, I liked it. The next point is the fact that, to my knowledge, there haven't been any updates since around 2013, and so the book is a bit outdated. In fact, entire features like agents are simply not around anymore. 
And my last point, I find it quite expensive for an outdated book. I mean, 20 bucks for a Kindle version is fine, but 50 for a paperback? Oof, expensive is a relative term, I guess. All in all, I give it a 7 out of 10. The author clearly knew actors and Aka in and out, however, the book could have used a more conservative publisher. Would I recommend this book to someone who wants to get into Aka today? With a grain of salt, but yes. Yes, I would. In fact, if I didn't like the book, I wouldn't review it. Snarkiness is not my cup of tea, so to sum it up, it's a good book. Now, I want to spend the rest of the video talking about actors a little bit. If you came here just for the review, I see you in the next one. No hard feelings. Now, let's get back to the question that I'm sure many of you are wondering about. Why is there no light band content on my channel? And why is Akka not as popular as it used to be? First of all, let's get one thing straight. Akka is amazing, and whoever tells you otherwise has no idea what they're talking about. The issue is that A, functional programming is all the rage these days, and B, both actors and Akka are seriously misunderstood creatures. Let's talk about the theory of actors first, in particular it's the actor model of computation. The most fascinating thing about it is that it is the only model, at least to my knowledge, that is based on physics as opposed to mathematics, which allows for a fair arbiter. Namely, the arbitration or the decision making is based solely on how long it takes the message to arrive. Physics, not mathematics. Now, as many things in science, this sounds useless at the first glance, but it is the opposite. This property allows you to, at least in theory, write a load balancer that would fairly decide which client to serve, again, solely based on how long it took the message to arrive. This is called unbounded non-determinism or indeterminism. Now, let's not get carried away, because in practice this means that programming with actors is a pain in the neck. You can't rely on anything. At least in theory, the messages can take their sweet time to arrive, they can arrive out of order or not arrive at all. In fact, even though actors sound simple on paper, in practice they can get very complicated and should be treated as a last resort kind of a solution, unless the problem fits them perfectly. And the thing is that there aren't that many problems that fit them perfectly. The obvious one is distributed computing. Another one could be maybe simulations, but that's about it. Another problem with actors is that initially they were presented as being at a high level of abstraction. And they are if you compare them to threads, which is not a fair comparison in today's standards. They are on an extremely low level of abstraction when it comes to application level business rules, however. For instance, the at most once delivery guarantee is not something that I want to worry about when I'm designing the business rules of my application. A single machine being an optimization for a potentially gigantic network of distributed actors is a leaky abstraction. Like, what are we supposed to do? Acknowledge every message? Actors are a great foundation for writing tools though. In fact, many tools like Akka Streams, Kafka or Spark are at least partially written in Akka with actors. For instance, Kafka provides the at least once delivery guarantee which is more suitable for business applications. But now you have to worry about item potency. Another reason why actors are not as popular these days is because the actor model of computation permits actors to change their state and thus respond to the next message differently. This makes it harder to model actors with strong types. I have to admit that I haven't looked at the typed version of actors that arrived in Akka much later, but I have a feeling that they require quite a bit of ceremony. In fact, I wonder whether this change in behavior can even be modeled with strong types without some additional constraints. And so I find actors to be a very niche technology, even though the theoretical foundations are there in day-to-day -day programming. Anytime you use any form of a message bus, you effectively use the concepts of the actor model of computation. And so I do recommend this book. At the same time, I'm simply not interested in making videos about them. I'm sorry to get your hopes up. In any case, the Kindle version on Amazon is around 20 bucks, so decide for yourself. Let me know in the comments below if you know about more recent Akka books that you liked more, and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsideyou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you learned something today, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whichever you prefer, and let's watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.